Good evening, Victory Church. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord with all of you. What a faithful, faithful father we have. What a good God that we serve. What a good, wonderful, loving father that we have. I say it all the time, but he's not just some far off being that's just kind of overseeing things. He is our faithful father. He dwells within us and is all around us. He has made his home within us. He has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. He pours out blessing upon blessing and keeps promise after promise. He has been faithful from the very beginning and will be faithful for all of eternity. He is worthy of the praise and he's worthy of the glory. Let's welcome him here tonight. He doesn't need an invitation because he's already here. But let's be a welcoming body. Let's be a thankful body. Let's be gracious children of our faithful Father. God, you are so, so good. And my words always seem to fail me, but you are faithful. You are true to your word, which is the absolute truth. And we praise you for it. We thank you that you are our comforter in time of need. You are our helper, our defender, our protector, our healer, our father. You have always been so good to us. And we thank you that we don't just have to hope that it's so, but we get to see it all around us. Your goodness is abounding everywhere. And we thank you for that. I thank you for this time that we have to come together and boldly stand on your word and proclaim how wonderful you are to us. I thank you for a body of believers that knows your truth and that we can take it out to the world that is hurting around us. I thank you that we get to be your light in a dark and crazy world. You are faithful and you are worthy of our utmost praise and devotion. So we choose to pour it out on you tonight. We choose to receive and accept the things that you have freely given. We thank you that we get to choose to be obedient to your word and gather together in your name. We choose to glorify you through every bit of this service and from now on. We love you so much, and we thank you for your enduring faithfulness. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's praise him tonight.
praise God that he has freely given us all things, all things for this life, to live them in a godly way, pleasing to his sight. We can choose to let the things of God rule and reign in our lives. We choose to let them rise, not just when we're gathered here together, but when we're at work, when we're at home, when we're in the grocery store. At all times, the things of the Lord should just be building up, rising up and pouring out of us because he dwells within us. And he's not meant to just be there all tucked away quietly. He is meant to pour out of us because it is who we are. We are his children and we are his faithful servants. So let's choose to let it rise and just overflow in Jesus' name. to cleanse all of our sins in his perfect, precious blood. He chose to make us whole. You chose to make us yours. <laughs> you chose to make us worthy of your love when we never could have been on our own. You didn't just wash the sin away. You washed the negative thinking about ourselves. You wash the remembering of those negative things. So anytime the devil tries to throw it in our face, we can boldly say, no, that's not true. God, you chose to love us at our very worst and to mold us into who you have called us to be, our very best, because you're the one that has made us. God, I thank you that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and because you chose to love us first, we can freely love you back. Hallelujah. Oh, things of God away. Your love has stayed the same. Your constant grace.
believe that, say amen. I want you to sit down just for a minute, please. David, at 17 years old, was anointed to be king. There's going to be a time, but that anointing was already there. It's going to be a little while before he was king, but the anointing was already there. I think I need to say it again. It was going to be a little while before he was king, but the anointing was already there. It was going to be a little while before you sing in church, but the anointing was already there. It was going to be a little while before you play in church, but the anointing was already there. Have y'all with me? Say amen. And so what the enemy's got to do is he was he's trying to, he comes to steal. Everybody say steal. And when is people going to wake up to the fact that he is a thief? And so David, in that anointing had 600 people gathered to him a small army and in his own mind his own mind he thought man I got to protect these people so he found a place called Ziklag how many ever read that story in the Bible Ziklag well it the, the name tells us something interesting because it means bending and winding so what's happening is, he says, hmm, I like the name of that town. It's, it's a, the long and winding road that leads to this door. I think Bob knows that. And said, I'm going to hide him there. So he really isn't using his anointing to pick it out. He's using a little bit of worry, a little bit of fear to pick it out. And to keep his 600 men and their families safe. So he goes out. They're going out shopping. They're going over to Walmart, which is down the road in another town. And when they get back, the city has been burned with fire. And all the wives and the children has been stolen by an enemy. Stolen. Remember, there's a thief. And always first on the list is he comes to steal. I'm y'all with me. Comes to steal. So David, he's got that anointing, but he chooses to fall on the ground and cry. And what happens is, because he's already kind of like a king, all of his men fall on the ground with him. Well, you're in trouble when everybody falls on the ground with you. Have y'all read with me? Say Amen. So they're all down there crying, and they've been crying long enough that it says they have no more power to cry. They've cried it all. So they reach over and start getting stones, and they're going to stone David to death. And the enemy, the enemy is now setting up for David never to be the king that he's anointed to be. Anybody going to talk to me? And now... Now we've got the possibility of a premature death on an anointed guy. Let me say that again. A premature death on an anointed guy. And the Spirit of the Lord, that anointing says, why don't you encourage yourself in the Lord? Why don't you encourage yourself? Let me just say that. Why don't you encourage yourself? Let me say it one more again. Why don't you just encourage yourself? And he encourages himself in the Lord. And he's not on the ground anymore. He's standing straight up. And in that encouragement, encouragement has the way. And he says, Lord, should I go after all of this? The Lord says, go get it. And he says, Lord, will I recover everything that was stolen? He says, you'll recover it all. And not one child is, child, child, not one child is frozen. <laughs> not one, I don't know where that came from. Hey, amen. Not one child, not, nobody's hurt, nobody's killed, nobody's molested, nobody, nothing. Because God puts a protection. It's protected and we're over there falling apart. Just throw up your hands right there. I'm, I'm really preaching better than your amen. 
You know, the whole time God knows where they are. The whole time God's protecting them. And so here's something amazing. How many of y'all staying with me on this story? So they, his 600 men get up. He's able to get them up because you've got to be encouraged yourself to get people up. And they find the man that knew where David's people were and led the enemy to Ziklag. And because that enemy led them, he's now on the side of the road, sick as a dog. And David said, I know, I know the enemy used you to find me, but now God's going to use you for help me find them. And the God, God gives David away and the guy gets healed. And shows him exactly where the enemy is. And he recovers everything. That's a crazy story. And it's loaded with things that we need. Because if that's in the old covenant, we got a better covenant. In Jesus' name. So will you do something with me before we do anything else? Will you thank God that you're living with me? Because sometimes we talk in the old covenant, not realizing that you and I don't live there, but we can pull miracles and we can pull the message out of the miracles because every miracle has a message. And all the miracles of the old covenant are types and shadows, little bitty pieces of look what the Lord's going to do in the new covenant. And if that's good, it's better now. Let me say that again. If that was good, it's better now. Because it's a better covenant established on a better, I have a better promise than David has. Come on now. You can shout better than you're tired. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, Lord, we praise you for it. Lord, we thank you for it. Lord, we magnify. You know, I'm going to tell you a secret. No matter how tired I am, no matter what my week's been, when I get up here and start saying the word, I'm renewed like an eagle. It's just the beatingest thing you ever saw. And I can't even go home and go to sleep. God's so good. Amen. Let it be like that for you tonight in Jesus' name. I'm going to ask our ushers to come. Sunday, we get to dedicate Cisco Jr. Amen. And he's not Cisco Junior College because of the college. He's going to be Cisco Junior College because of what his daddy and mama are going to teach him. Did you like that turn? Amen. I mean, I appreciate these young men. Say amen. Amen. I love you back. Lord, thank you for this offering. Thank you. I thank you that we have a given church, and I appreciate it. And we give you praise, and we give you glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. God bless you.
So bring me your heart, no matter how broken, just come as you are. a big hand clap in the Lord. Thank you. Be sure and be with us Sunday morning. Had a great time last Sunday. Hundreds of people have watched last Sunday morning. Hundreds all over the place. How I many you know God's faithful? And God's good. Would you go with me to Galatians 5? I grew up in a so-called spirit-filled church. And my whole family was filled with spirit, as they call it. And, uh, but there was something missing in it, and it was the fruit of the spirit. The fruit there means results, carpos. It's, it's the results. It's it's something that the Holy Spirit is giving you constantly. It's the fruit. You, the Lord is the vine, you're the branch. In everything God is, there's things that you have from God, things you have from Jesus, things you have from the Holy Spirit, but they're all three in one. So, last week, if you got to come, I, I dealt with the first three, love, joy, and peace. How many remember that? And that's the fruit that the Holy Spirit produces in my life for me. So that I can understand the love of God. I can walk in the joy of the Lord that is my strength. Amen. Several years ago, I was invited to a television station to preach. And they were, they were going all day long. It was me, it was Richard Roberts, or Robert's son, some other people like that. And all of a sudden, I preached, and then they asked me to preach again. 
and they asked me to preach again. I preached five times. I'll well tell you, five times. And God was moving so much that people started driving from around Texas to the television station, and the Holy Spirit had them all laid out there. They just all laid out everywhere. It was it was one of the greatest one day moves of God that I have ever seen in my life. He's so faithful. Thank God for the power of God. But just as important is the fruit of the Spirit. Have y'all with me? Say amen. And so I want to deal with the, the second section of three because the first three, the Spirit grows them in me for me. I can only love you as I love myself. All things work together for good to them that love God. That's where that love of God comes back. The Holy Spirit helps me. That joy, that peace, peace, peace. Thank God for peace. But I want to look at the next three because these are fruit of the Spirit that the Holy Spirit, the results of the Holy Spirit grows these and produce these in my life to give to you, to give to my wife, to give to my family, for you to give. They're fruit for giving. I mean, thank God that God gives you stuff to give. In fact, I'll be honest with you, giving out that is just as important as sowing a seed of money. Come on now, are you with me? We all the time say we can't outgive God. Well, we don't even got we don't even know how giving is. Because giving is in gifts, giving is in fruit, giving's all over the place. How many of y'all with me? Say amen. And so the extreme amount of giving that I'm going to share with you tonight can actually change things all around you. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the Holy Spirit growing fruit in our lives. And everybody said amen. Galatians chapter 5. Are you all with me now? Remember I told you last last Wednesday there are nine fruit. There are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And there are nine in the Beatitudes. Three sections of nines. Have you with me? Say amen. And if I live in all three of those nine, I'm going to live a victorious life in Jesus' name. Amen. So verse number 22. Hallelujah to God. Let me get there. Thank you. I wish my Bible would turn as I say the scripture. But Yes, baby. I guess she's afraid I'll accidentally spit while I'm preaching on her. I don't know. (laughs) But the fruit, the results of the Spirit, the results of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. It really should read faithfulness. A faith, it's faithfulness. Meekness, temperance, self-control, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. Why? Because the flesh lusteth against the spirit. So when these fruit begin to grow, your flesh will lust against them. It will want its way. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also go, walk, do in the Spirit. And everybody says amen. Amen. Let's take that middle three and let's start with long-suffering. Everybody say it with me. Long-suffering. Because the actual word there, and I'm not trying to change words, is patience. Patience. Everybody shout patience. What the Lord wants me to do is to be able to endure with people that are hard to be patient with. Anybody want to say amen? With a child, with a mate, with fellow church people at work, wherever it is, he wants me to be able to endure with patience. I'm, I wrote some things down in the name of Jesus. The Vines Greek Dictionary of this word says something incredible. 
It says that I am not insisting on the letter of the law with that person. How many of y'all heard what I just said? That with, with that person, I'm not insisting on the law reprimanding them. I'm patient with them. I'm long-suffering with them. I'm not asking for vengeance. I'm not asking for the law because I'm redeemed from the curse of the law, so I'm not going to use the law. How many of y'all getting with me? Say amen. And so I'm not insisting. I'm not going to live in anger about that. I'm going to live with patience because I can't live in anger and in faith at the same time. Patience keeps me from anger. I'm going to say that out loud. Patience keeps me from anger. Because I've asked God to help them. I've asked God to bless them. I've asked God to move. I've asked God to change. But when I don't see them changing, I need the fruit of patience and be able to deal with them with patience. Somebody help me now. So the Lord grows this fruit in me to help the people. That I won't worry about them. I won't worry because they're doing stupid stuff. I won't worry that they're going to be destroyed or worried that they're going to be killed or worried about how they're acting. I will be patient and I'm trusting God that what Jesus did on the cross was for them too. Come on. Every one of you in this building knows somebody that you said, Oh my God, I, I don't know how their life's going to turn out. But you still need to have the fruit of the Spirit called patience. Why? Why? Because it'll keep you from getting angry at it. It'll keep you from getting angry with them. Because I can't be angry and have faith for them at the same time. Because I don't know about you, the Bible says be angry and sin not. If I get angry, I seem to sin. Y'all don't look all holy now at me. I mean, y'all love me, say amen. amen. And so the fruit of the Spirit is that patience that I need, that enduring, he that endureth to the end is saved, that patience that I need. And so I was at home today thinking about the disciples running to Jesus, sleeping at the bottom of the boat, and waking him with these words, don't you care that we perish? I mean, you know, you got to have a little bit of patience with people that walk up to you and say, don't you care about me at all? Yeah. Have you ever heard that before? Maybe from a, don't raise your hand, I know, I know. Don't you care about me at all? And then I got to thinking later on when Peter, Peter was the, the main one, the main character. And then later on with Peter, he comes to Jesus and says, If it's really you, bid me come to you on the water and start sinking. And Jesus reaches out and takes his hand. So I know he has not learned much of nothing from the first boat trip. But Jesus has patience. Then Jesus is talking to Peter about being crucified. And Peter says, suffer it not to be so. No, you're not. No, you're not. And Jesus has to say, get behind me, Satan. For thou savest the things that don't be of man more than you do of God. But the Lord is being patient. The fruit of the Spirit that Jesus was anointed with in his baptism is working on Peter so that he can become the apostle that he needs to become and be there on the day of Pentecost to receive the Holy Spirit in baptism and to give us things about the blood of Jesus in first and second, third. Come on. Patience. Let patience have her. Per Everybody say perfect. So in patience, I'm believing in a perfect work. I believe God has the ability to do a perfect work there. Oh, just help me now. Help, help me. Now, I'm, I'm going to go to this just for a moment before I go any farther. How, how many of you ever prayed about something and then later on something rises up and you start, you start being concerned or worried? Come on. 
And it's like you walked away from that prayer six months ago. So now you're not walking by faith in that six months ago prayer. Instead of saying, wait a minute, I prayed, I meant it, I said it in faith, and I'm walking in it. I was living in faith when I said it. Now I'm walking by faith and staying with it. Living by faith means you prayed that day. You said that day in the name of Jesus, that day. That day I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Now walking by faith says I've already prayed it. I'm walking it out in the name of Jesus. It's not 6,000 prayers about the same thing. It's one prayer of faith. And then walking in it. Sometimes that added prayer is just us convincing ourselves. And if you need to, do it. Or you're edifying. Use it as I'm edifying myself with this faith prayer in Jesus' name. I'm strengthening myself because uh, I'm not going to be weary in this well doing and faint. Just lift up your hand and give God a cry. I'm, I'm really... Because once I, in living by faith, pray that prayer, you might ought to write it down. You might ought to put it down. I did on this particular day. I did on this particular day. I I did, I did, I did. And I lived by faith in the prayer. Now I'm walking by faith in what I said and what I prayed. Now I've got my patience, that fruit of patience, toward that person. I'm not going to be angry about it. I'm not going to be crazy about it. I did it. Look at me. Nobody, God is not going to send anybody to hell. They'll send themselves. How many of y'all love me? They'll send themselves. And you know, I said all the time, well, a loving God, how could he? He ain't a gonna. <laughs> He's a loving God. He's just not going to do it. Amen. Give God a crazy praise. So that patience, that fruit of long suffering will keep me from worry. It'll keep me from worrying. Amen. Amen. My granny used to worry about me. I've told the story about it at a funeral. They made me stand in front of her casket without me knowing about it. I was 17. They brought me in front of it. 37 ministers came down the aisle. I'm standing there in a whole big at Elliot Hamill Funeral Home. All these preachers coming down there laying hands on me. Come on, amen. But she was so worried about me, so worried about me. Come on, amen. She'd been praying for me. She knew I had a call to preach the gospel, but she was worrying at the same time and did that. Come on, amen. amen. But ladies and gentlemen, if you pray, don't worry. Men ought to pray and not to faint. Amen. Give God another hand clap of praise. So you see, this patience, this long suffering, God grows it to give to you. To give to you. To give to you. For my wife to give it to me. How many heard that? Biggest amen I've gotten in years. Long-suffering. Patience. 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 How many of y'all love me now? Say amen. Amen. Let's look at the second one. Are y'all with me there on that? Hallelujah. Through faith and patience, we inherit promises. Everybody say inherit. Now, I I didn't know I was going to go there, so all right. So... If I add patience to faith, I will inherit that promise. It came through to me through inheritance. That's interesting. That is an extra way of getting it. I inherited it. As a child of God. I inherited the promise through faith and patience. That's good stuff. I haven't enjoyed that. In Jesus' name. All right, y'all with me? Let's go to the second one. 
Number one, patience or long-suffering. Number two, gentleness. Oh, Lord. Let's go to Psalms 1835, if you'll put it up there for me, sister. Psalms 1835. Hmm. Thou hast given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand held me up, and your gentleness has made me great. Time and time again, the Bible says that gentleness makes you great. It is a kindness between people. It is a tender kindness, a loving kindness and tender mercy. Come on. And it's right there. Goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. Are you with me now? Goodness is a part of mercy's new every morning. Gentleness makes you great. Mm. A man being gentle with his wife, wife being gentle with the gentleness in a family makes it a great family. It's not money, it's gentleness. Loving kindness, tender mercies. How many of y'all love me? This is a fruit God, the Holy Spirit grows in you to give it, to give it. Look at the turmoil in our country. Look at the fussing, look at the fighting. Gentleness is gone from the United States of America. But gentleness is a fruit of the Spirit that ought to be in the church. It's a kindness. In the days of the kings like Saul and David, King David had a rule. His rule was, don't you let anybody in my house that is crippled. Read it. I do not want to see a cripple. I do not want to eat with a cripple. I don't want to do it. I don't want no cripples around me. Am y'all with me? And all of a sudden, one day he rose up and says, Is there anybody in the house of Saul? He chased me. He tried to kill me that I can show kindness to, that I can be gentle with. And they brought this boy named Jonathan. They brought him into his house. Now, he was a cripple. He had been dropped by the nurse when he was a child, and he was crippled. But sitting at the table, nobody knew it because the table covered His weakness. That's why God says, I got a table prepared for you. And it will cover your weaknesses. That's beautiful. That will make somebody shout. And sister got up, and I thought she was going to run around the building, but she's just checking on the baby. Isn't that a beautiful story? Kindness, gentleness, kindness and gentleness. Amen. Throw up that next scripture. Hallelujah to God. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. What? The gentleness of Christ. It says that Jesus would not even put out a smoking ember. He wouldn't come along and tear off a bruised reed. That's interesting. Nobody preaches on that. That if he come along and saw this reed that was growing but bruised and bent, he wouldn't say that has no value. He would not break it. If he came to a smoking ember that no longer had a flame and barely any heat, he wouldn't put it out. He says, like, I can rekindle this thing. I can keep this thing going. I can do something with this, even though it looks like to everybody else, I can't do a thing with it. 
but I can do something about it. I can do something with it. I'll be gentle with it. How many of the Lord been gentle with you? Oh, let's just thank him a little bit longer than that. How many know, how many know the Lord been gentle with you? Gentleness makes me great. The Christ, the gentleness of Christ, the gentleness of Christ who is present and, and, and base among you, but being absent, I'm bold toward you. But he says, I'm here. I'm here right now in the gentleness of Christ. My goodness gracious. That's incredible. Oh, when couples are like that. Mm. Let's lift our hands and give God a crazy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So you can see that the Spirit grows it for me to be like that. Yes, Lord. For me to be like that. When my sweet wife is at Baylor. And she couldn't be in the shower. She had all those tubes and those surgeries. And so I had to kind of bathe my wife. And so the ladies and nurses said, uh, Mr. Estes, do you want to do it or do you want us to do it? And I said, no, I'm going to do it. But I made them put those little, you remember them little old things? That, what, yeah, I made them put them in the microwave and made them warm. I'm y'all with me, say amen. And I, would, and I would be there washing her. And the tears would roll down her face. But it was the gentleness between us two. Gentleness heals. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Lift up your hand and give God a crazy. Yes, gentleness heals. How many of y'all believe that? Say amen. Especially when somebody expects you to be worn out. <laughs> tarred. Tar. Let me know what tarred is. Tarred. Not feathered, just tarred. Or they expect you to be angry. And yet you are gentle. Worried, no gentle. You're proving that the Holy Ghost is in control of you with them. Y'all getting anything out of these? Let's go to the third one. How many of y'all plan on coming back after all this? Amen. Lord have mercy. I, I said it gentle. Amen. The last one that we're going to talk about tonight is goodness. Goodness. Goodness and mercy are following me right now. Let's go to Exodus chapter 34, verse 6. Let me give you two words that you can put beside this word goodness. goodness. Number one, fair. Number two, better. It is the fruit of the Spirit that helps you to be better with a person. Everybody say better. Come on. It's Him helping you to do better, to be better. There's nothing like it when it's that fruit of the Spirit. That you're better by. So look at this scripture. And the Lord passed before him. That's Moses. And proclaimed. And proclaimed the Lord. The Lord saying this. The Lord saying the Lord. The Lord God merciful and gracious. Long suffering. Patient. And abundant in goodness. And truth. So God says, I'm abundant in better. I'm thinking now for some shout. Maybe a little bit better shout. I 
am abundant in fair. I'm abundant in better. So eventually he had to make a better promise because he's abundant and better. He had to make it better. He said, this, this isn't working. Let me make it better. The law was perfect, but the flesh made the law weak. That The law by itself was perfect, but man couldn't do it. So he said, let me make this better so man can do it. <coughs> better. So this fruit helps me to be better. Years ago, my mom came to me back when she was here. She'd sit right there. Put all the fill it. And my mom, this is unusual, but my mom could feel the Lord with her. She'd feel it with her, her hands. Her hands, she would start feeling the Lord. And Aunt Shirley feels it in her legs. And if you watch Fonda, she, yeah, and Aunt Shirley goes like this. And Fonda feels it in her feet. If you'll watch up there some Sunday mornings, you'll see that foot just start getting it like this. She can chew gum, do that foot like this, and play all at the same time. How many know that has to be God? Because I'm focusing just to do what I do. And she's over there chewing gum, playing, and doing them feet all in beat. Even you got a little bit of that going on in you sometimes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Abundant and better. So my sweet mama came up to me and she says, Randy, I can hear a tone of anger in your voice. And I, later on I was in the car with Fonda. And I said, you know what my mom said to me today? She said, I bet she told you you got some anger in your voice. I said, I do not. And she said, I rest my case. <laughs> well, I don't want anger in my voice. I want better in my voice. I want better, 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 better. Well, the Holy Spirit gives me the fruit to give called better. To make it better than it's ever been. You and I, with this, can make it better than it's ever been. Isn't that good? Either that or you're going to go to the mall every week. Better. Everybody say better. Sweet girl, when you come here, do you feel the better that we love you with? Mm. Isn't that beautiful? You made my day. God's good. Everybody say better. Mm. And if it's right, maybe a mom and dad are afraid for their teenager to come or their child with situations to come, but they walk in and the fruit of the Spirit says, I got some better for you. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 Because we win souls. You and I can't save them. We win them. Jesus saves them. He that winneth souls is wise. Amen. So fair and better. Next scripture. Would you do it please for me? Hallelujah to God. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness, the better. The goodness, the better of the Lord. It is all over the planet. Did you know that on every street in America, God has placed wit uh, wisdom? He's made it so accessible that you can move anywhere you want to move and wisdom is there. You say, well, it ain't where I work. Yes, it is. The whole earth is full of the better from the Lord. Fair. To be fair. To be fair. A preacher a few years ago talked about God is not fair. I turned it off. God is fair. 
because he's no respecter of persons. That's fair. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. That's fair. Yes, it is. That's fair. Amen. Come unto me, all ye all. that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. That's fair. That is fair. And he'll be fair with everybody. He will be better with everybody. Yes. And that's the fruit of goodness. Yes. That he grows in us for each Hallelujah. other. Give the Lord a crazy praise. That's the fruit of goodness. In Jesus' name. Go to that. Is there one more scripture? There you go. I knew there was one more. How many appreciate me saying that? I just had a feeling. No, it was on my notes. Here we go. This is it. Oh, despises thou the riches of of his better. The Lord is rich and better. What do you mean despise it? Despise it. Well I'm just not going to be good to them. They're terrible. Despise thou the riches of his goodness and far Barons, I mean, glad God's forbearing, yes. Yes, sir. not overbearing, forbearing, yes, long suffering, not knowing that the fairness, the better of God, leads you to repentance. The better of God leads people to repentance. I'm going to say it a few times and I'm going to see what kind of church I really pastor. The better of God leads us to repentance. The better, the fairness, the better of God leads us to repentance. So we come into this thing because he, he makes life better. He comes into life because he gives us better, a better covenant. And helps us to do better and to give better. And everything gets, just gets better. I'm going to tell you, good is the enemy of better. Good is the enemy of best. Because this isn't, God's not offering just good. He's offering best and better. Amen. Why don't you stand together with me, please. How many of y'all got something out of these three? Mm. Well, I, in a few weeks, I'm going to preach the last three. How many of y'all love this young man? I love you. Appreciate you. Hallelujah. You know, if this gospel is preached like it should be and received like it is, we just get better. Life just gets better. Our whole inside is filled with the believer. My insides are filled with believers. My outside, I have the armor of God on. The only thing I need to make sure of is that my mind knows it. Because the enemy can attack my spirit. I want to say that one more time. I'm getting ready to close something here. How many times have I closed? Just this first one? I love you. You don't care. I mean, yeah, I love you. She's been with me a long time. You might close 50 times. I don't care. I ain't counting. This devil can't talk to your spirit because light and darkness can't communicate. Read your Bible. He can't stand toe-to-toe with that new creation. He's an old creature. Old creatures can't stand toe-to-toe. That's why that new creature can walk up to an old sickness and the old sickness has got to go because the new creature is always more powerful than anything that's old. That ought to make you take your boots off and run. How many believe new is a lot better than old? I will tell you that driving down a dirt road in an old truck is pretty good. But that's about it old. (laughs) So what I got to do is this mind business because that's where he talks to me. 
if I get the better from my believer up into my thinker and get the stinking thinking out of my thinking and get the better from my spirit up into my thinker. Amen. That's my new creation getting up here into my new thinking. If I don't think I'm a new creature, I'm, I'm 70 years old. I'm a new creature. At, I'm a new creature at 70. Let me believe you're a new creature. I would say, who's the oldest person in the building? But I better not do it. I might get in trouble. But it don't matter whoever's the oldest person in the building. You're still a, a new creature in Christ. You know what our problem is? Is that nobody really wants to be a baby Christian because that word kind of messes with our minds. Nobody wants to be a baby. But I need to be a baby Christian so I can get the sincere milk of the word and start growing into the measure. I'm not going to reach the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ unless I become a baby Christian. So let's praise Him for you. Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love the Lord. David said, I love the Lord because he heard my cry. Lord, I, I love you and I appreciate you and I thank you for these beautiful, 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 wonderful, wonderful people that are here with me. Thank you for them. Thank you. Thank you. Glory, glory to you. Oh, glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. Bless you, we love you, we appreciate you.